Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Wa ba'd rabbi shahli sadri wa yassin li amri. Wa ahlul uqtata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana inna kanta la'alim al-hakim. Right, everybody, jazakumullahu khayn. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Alhamdulillah. And it's a pleasure to have all of you brothers and sisters here uh, on uh, our Zoom uh, portal, alhamdulillah. So obviously, um, there's been some um, challenges that the Muslim Ummah are facing. So we decided uh, to make this uh, a means of help for the Muslim Ummah, especially our youngsters. And inshallah, this is going to be an interactive session. It's been recorded. So for our audience, if you need to pose any questions, you can put it on the chat, inshallah ta'ala. Our panel will try to uh, give you the response and the answer as the most accurate way possible, inshallah ta'ala. So our audience, the brothers and the sisters, or the youngsters who are there online, are requested to post your question on the chat as any question you have, inshallah, and we will take it further with our um, panel. So can I please request, first of all, our panel to introduce the, themselves first, who are they, what they're doing, and what is the background of the profession. So can we start with uh, Sister Muslima, please? Sister Muslima, can you start with your introduction, please? Jazakumullah khairan. Okay, Jazakumullah uh, khair, uh, Brother uh, Imam Javid. Um, so uh, basically, my name is Muslima, um, uh, Muslima Mia. I'm based in South Wales. I am a integrative counsellor. My background is mainly working with children, young people, adults, um, right across uh, various uh, areas and fields. Um, I've worked in schools, um, I've worked uh, across universities, domestic abuse, bereavement. So I've got quite a wide range of experience. Uh, I've been working within the mental health field for about 10 years. Um, practicing as a counsellor. So alhamdulillah, um, looking forward to this discussion today. Inshallah, jazakumullah khairan. And I can tell that that logo of yours, that is your company, how you're practicing, it's called New Leaf, is that right? Yes, okay, yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, Brother Suleiman, can you please introduce yourself? You're one of the panel <laughs> member, please. Jazakumullah khairan. Yes, yeah, so my name is Suleiman Munir. Professionally, my background is in management. So I work in IT and telecoms, and I've been fortunate enough to work in uh, a lot of cities, both in the UK uh, and overseas over the last, uh, last 10, 15 years. Uh, outside of work, I'm a volunteer for, WEN, for MEND, which is Muslim Engagement and Development, which is an organization which seeks to tackle Islamophobia both in the UK and in, in some instances overseas through getting Muslims confident enough to engage in the media and civic and political life. I also, uh, as part of that, I'm chair of Reading Muslim Council here in Reading and I chair the independent advisory group uh, to the local police here in, in Reading as well. Wonderful, Jazakumullah uh, khairan. Brother Shahzad, please can you introduce yourself? You're one of the panel, also the members of the panel. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Thank you, Sheikh, for inviting me. Uh, my name is Shazad, Shazad Hanif, um, and I'm the founder and lead coach uh, of Guidance Coaching, uh, which is an organization that I set up about uh, approximately two and a half, three years ago. Um, and we specialize in helping uh, the Muslim community. Uh, so we have, uh, we have two parts of Guidance Coaching. One is very mainstream, helping people with challenges in terms of life, in terms of health, finances, uh, relationships. And then we have another... Uh, arm to our um, uh, to our service, which is really focused on the Muslim community um, and specifically around the area of relationships. Um, and especially in these challenging times, Alhamdulillah, we've been very blessed that we've been able to help uh, our community, not just locally here in Reading, where I reside with my family, but also worldwide. Uh, we've been able to help people in Asia, in the Middle East, in um, in Africa. So Alhamdulillah, it's really been a um, uh, a wonderful journey for me personally the last two or three years where I've really got um, a, a, a good understanding of what challenges the Muslim uh, Ummah is facing globally, not just locally. Um, so it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here and inshallah I'll try to share some of my experiences. Wonderful. Jazakumullah khairan. And lastly, Sister Khadija, please can you give us your background and where you're originally from and your profession, please? Yes, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Auzu billahi min ash rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. My name is Khadija Saleh and I'm originally from Gambia in West Africa. 
I am a social worker and currently I work for child health disability team but I've also worked with um, EAST, that's Ethnic Youth Support Team, supporting asylum seekers and refugees and members of the BME community. I also am a teacher, a Halakha teacher in Swansea, towards the Halakha group. And uh, um, um, on my free time, I will assist um, sisters who are having difficulties in you know, diff different aspects of their lives. And uh, I'm very happy to be part of this panel today and hope I will be uh, able to be of benefit to all the members who, who are joining us. And I say salam alaikum to everyone in the panel and to Sheikh Javed. And I pray that, you know, Allah grant us success in whatever we are doing. I mean, Jazakallah khair, Sister Khadija, that was very heartwarming. Uh, uh, for, the, for the audience, if you need to post any questions from now on in regards to challenges that you are facing with racism, Islamophobia, or problems at school or in your daily life, in college, universities, or in your daily life, normal, please, you can post those uh, questions in your chat, inshallah, that I can give that to the panel and they can answer it. However, let's start with some of the questions that I have in mind for the panel to give us an overview to all of us, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, Brother Suleiman, can we start with yourself uh, being a representative of men? Um, it, it seems that this issue that has escalated just a few weeks ago in regards to Black Lives Matters, it, it, it wasn't something that is, it was new or something that has come into the media just recently. Uh, we know that many um, racism activity or Islamophobic activities have been brushed under the carpets. And unfortunately, subsequently, consequ consequently, uh, many people have suffered uh, due to this, and I'm sure they have reached out to you in terms of help and support. So what do your advice would be in regards to this for uh, our audience, uh, especially our youngsters um, who are in, in education? Uh, that's an excellent question, uh, Imam Javid. I want I hope to answer uh, with regards to our youth, definitely. So. So in terms of the issues regarding the black community and also Islamophobia, for me, it's two sides of the same coin, two sides of the same coin. Muslims, so just to give a brief, a brief background on, you know, culturally and historically. So, you know, racism towards the black community, Islamophobia, over the centuries, this is not something that is new to Muslims. We face these challenges uh, throughout our throughout our history, you know, throughout our different nationalities across the world, different countries. This is not something new. However, saying that, it's not that we should accept racism or Islamophobia. We should look at this in a way that this hasn't that this hasn't held us down. So, in terms of the black community, the Muslims, mashallah, we've been able to grow as as communities, grow as countries. Islam has spread throughout the world. We've been at the forefront of things like. Know, invention uh, within different Muslim uh, Muslim organizations, Muslim countries. It hasn't really held us back, although it is doing now. It is doing, no, no one is no denying that. So f from a youth perspective, I would say, although we've faced these challenges in our life, this is not something new to us, and we have overcome it in the past. And we can continue to overcome it. So don't let that hold you back. Don't think that because Islamophobia is prevalent in schools or you see in the media, or racism, you see what's happening in America. This is something that needs to, you know, uh, shut down or shun our personalities, mm -hmm. and we're afraid to speak up. And because of that, you know, we can't express ourselves. In fact, Islam teaches Islam is a pragmatic, pragmatic religion. It teaches mm -hmm. us to challenge to challenge these sorts of racist views, the Islamophobic views, and do our best to progress in society. So my 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 my, my sincerest advice would be: that if you're facing something like this. You are not alone. Mm. The first thing to argue is you are not alone. Please talk to somebody who can support you. But also try to develop the, the confidence to challenge some of these, challenge some of these views. Mm. So, for example, you know we might see a Brit the uh, British community, for example, has been has been known for things like football hooliganism for many mm. many years. Mm. That doesn't mean our neighbours or our, our colleagues or our school teachers who are white are are hooligans. You know, the, the argument itself is, is a ridiculous one that if you have a few bad apples, it doesn't mean that everybody is tarnished with the same brush. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and develop these, these sorts of uh, confidence in our youth to be able to tackle, tackle those sorts of views. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is Islam teaches us to be, pr be proud of who we are. Mm 
Mm. We need to be proud to be Muslims. We don't need to be overtly, you know, overtly arrogant or boasting about what we do. We should, you know, slip into conversations that we enjoy praying, that we have halakas or madrasa classes in, in, in the masajid and we get together on various occasions. So you shouldn't be afraid to express the fact that we might be fasting or the fact that we like to pray or dress in a certain way. Because mm. cultural differences, particularly in the UK, are being, have been grown and are accepted. So we shouldn't be afraid, you know, for the if individual who maybe wants to wear hijab mm. or who wants to ask the teachers, can I have a prayer room to pray? We should be confident within ourselves mm. because over the years, this is how Islam has spread. This is how Islam has spread. It's, it's spread primarily, not through just the dawah purposes, but when people see that the Muslims are confident in their own personalities, in their own religion, we've seen that they, they are not afraid to ask, you know, ask for facilities. And then a, a youngster who's not a non-Muslim will see that as, as a point to be able to say, oh, if a Muslim can ask for something, or he's not, or, although what you see in the media, besides that, he's still, he's still not afraid to ask for a prayer room or, or ask for halal food or things like that, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. that inspires confidence for support. Mm -hmm. So once you, you are confident in yourself as a Muslim, that I'm a Muslim, you know, I have nothing to fear, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing, then other people will be inspired to, to help you with that. So my, my, my sincere advice would be that don't see what you, don't be uh, upset by what you see mm. in the news. For example, in Black Lives Matter, we saw what happened you know, to, uh, to Floyd in America. And that is, those things are deeply upsetting. But Islam teaches us to actually do something about it. So for example, we can you know, talk to our teachers and say, look, we want to address this topic of Black Lives Matter. Can you talk about it a little bit more? Mm. You know, we want to address the issues with refugees or Islamophobia. And can we work with somebody to address this? You know, we've seen there's been racist comments in school and or Islamophobic comments in school. We'd like to challenge those views. You know, or most, uh, most schools will have uh, safeguarding teachers. So you know, you can approach those teachers and say, you know, we'd like to do something about this yeah. and develop a, you know, develop a presentation or you know, talk about it in an assembly and things like that. So it's no need to go back into your shell. That's the, sometimes it can be a normal human reaction to try and hide or go into your shell about this, feel embarrassed. But no, no, no. Islam teaches us to be, like I said, to be strong personalities, to challenge where we see oppression, to challenge the views that may be negative. So let's try and, you know, and we have, mashallah, in most Muslim communities that I've certainly lived in, we have confident individuals, such as people in the mosques or the Muslim groups, are there to be able to present those skills Mm. To, uh, to Muslim children so they can learn them. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I think Buddha Shazad is much better at being able to articulate this in a little bit more detail, but developing that, str that strong ethos that you have that, mm -hmm. yes, no, we're not afraid that we are Muslims, we are proud of this fact, and we want to teach Muslims, teach, not Mus sorry, teach non Muslims about Islam, how Islam is a peaceful religion, how you know, the things through invention that Islam has brought mm. to the world, how Islam has spread. You know, it's, it's just a system, for example, you know, the, the uh, technology that we brought into the, into the world. So things like that we should be proud of. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, actually, Brother Shazan wanted to ask you a question because Brother Suleiman just tapped in into that. Uh, but before going to you, can I, can I please uh, quickly, not quickly, but can I take uh, Sister Muslima's point of view? She's a counsellor. Uh, Sister Muslima, I'm sure during your profession that you have worked in many years, uh, as you mentioned, you have dealt issues with uh, youngsters in terms of counseling. They've been traumatized by many events in the past or recently. Um, and unfortunately, parents haven't been able to give them that, that kind of support and help. Hence, they have referred, they, they have come to you or referred themselves to you so you can make sure you can have some kind of therapy or some kind of counseling session what were the challenges? What were the challenges that you faced uh, uh, whilst having these sessions, or uh, by explaining to our youngsters that if this kind of scenarios do come, what is the best uh, possible action or intervention that they can take place? Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So basically, um, you know, obviously discrimination isn't acceptable, and I think a lot of people are struggling, um, you know, relating to mental health, and I think in terms of discrimination has such a huge impact um i think on adults despite on children and young people um 
and I think it depends on um, our outlook towards mental health. So my biggest thing would be to seek help. Um, some of the challenges that I faced is the lack of understanding um, and the fear. Uh, there is a lot of fear in terms of, um, okay, should I be doing this? Is this normal? Um, things like that. And that kind of lead into a loss of identity for a lot of people, a lot of confusion um, and kind of um, leaving them really isolated, um, isolated from family, isolated from friends um, and almost not feeling proud of who they are. Um, you know, a lot of challenges. And I think that often can lead into not being able to achieve um, in your studies, not being able, not feeling kind of happy within yourself. And, you know, if that isn't resolved at an early age, then people tend to carry that onto adulthood and then carry that into their own families. So the stigma and that kind of uh, cycle then that can continue. Mm. So I think in terms of um, anybody out there that, is struggling in terms of uh, accepting this whole, you know, accepting the challenges and the, and the discrimination and struggling with it. My advice would be to seek help. Don't be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. and sometimes as well, I, I know uh, I come from the Bengali background. Um, I think sometimes our parents can minimize and not understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I know when, when I was in school, when I used to speak to my dad, my dad was like, oh yeah, that's fine. You know, I was beaten up and called black this, black that when I was in school. Um, it's part of growing up, but actually in this day and age, it isn't, you know, it's part, you know, it's, it's our right to be recognized for, for who we are as Muslims, as mm -hmm. individuals, and we shouldn't be discriminated against. So, you know, if your parents don't understand it, then, you know, like uh, brother uh, earlier said, you know, go and speak to your uh, teachers, go and speak to your sisters, go and not speak to your halakas, um, go and seek for advice. You know, there are a lot of um, services out there compared to before that do want to hear people mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, do want to support you. So it's really important to kind of get those support interventions in place to break those cycles um, so that you can be, um, you know, f you know, not struggling with your mental health, uh, things like anxiety, depression, low moods, um, or some people even go into self-harming because they can't cope uh, with the pressures and just feel very isolated. Uh, so I think, you know, it is normal. A lot of young people do suffer with this, so don't suffer in silence. Jazakallah khairan. Very, very informative. Uh, Brother Shahzad, uh, sisters, uh, Muslim just mentioned a few points, and I was just trying to make a bullet point of it. So I want to refer to yourself. She mentioned about fear. Mm. There's an element of fear within, within our community or society. At the same time, there's a, ba a cultural background, um, maybe um, in, in this, that maybe our culture... Uh, we will think, oh, it's okay, don't worry, we're in a minority, they're in a majority, so we just got to obey by it, let it go, don't worry about it, don't put a complaint, because I've come, as an imam, I've come across these situations, but obviously I'm not trained enough to give a counseling or therapy sessions. However, you know, I had youngsters within my madrasa, which I've been teaching, or children, you know, being bullied, uh, and when they speak to their parents, say, it's okay, don't worry, uh, the head teacher will deal with it, or maybe they have reported this in the in the in the higher authority in the school, colleges, university, but there's never been any action plan, and they, therefore, subsequently, our youngsters have become despondent of no actions being taken by the uh, the higher authorities. Therefore, that has affected them uh, in the progression, the studies. How would you like to explain to our youngsters that? How can they minimize all this and not to have the fear or what's the best advice you can give them in regards to this, please? Jazakallah khair, thank you for your question. Um, it's, I, I think from a youngster's perspective, um, uh, for me personally, there's two aspects to this. One is um, I would like to tap into my own experience growing up. I'm a second generation Muslim. Uh, I'm born and bred in Reading um, here in the UK. So growing up, you know, I felt a lot of um, resentment, hatred. I don't know, hatred might be a slightly strong word, but definitely resentment towards the host community uh, because of incidents, racism that took place through my um, schooling uh, journey, through my schooling life. Um, not so much in college and university, um, but definitely uh, through my schooling days. And what that did was that that kind of built up 
a stigma in my mind, um, you know, some rancor towards, uh, you know, the, the host community, to white people in general, to be honest. Um, so I can, I can relate to our youth who are growing up and not feeling uh, too keen on integrating fully. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, firsthand, I can relate to that. I'm sure, you know, our panel can as well. Uh, I know Brother Suleiman is also um, born and bred here in the UK. So, you know, th that's, th that's one aspect to it. Mm. Now, growing up, I didn't have that support system around me. You know, there wasn't an imam like yourself, for example, who I could have gone and spoken to. Mm. So you know, things have improved so much. You know, I, it, you know I, I'm an absolutely brilliant point about the parents. I think the parents still have that um, colonial mentality, you know, that, okay, you know, that my father, for example, he came in the early 60s. He came here to work. He came here to work and earn money. You know, he wasn't too, you know, he would just brush those things off, you know, racism and things like that. You just get on with it. You come to work. They had the mindset, we're going to make some money and go back home again. They, they never went back home, um, but they never really kind of made a, a strong effort to groom us, the second generation. So um, I think that's one aspect to it. I think it's, you know, when you go through racism, yourself, uh, it's, it affects you in a way which is quite difficult. How mm. do you tackle that? Or how did I tackle that? Is that I, I managed to understand through my experience going into the world of work, mixing with different people, I realized that not everybody is the same. There's mm. some real gems out there in, you know, in, uh, you know, in the host community. And um, subhanAllah, some of the rights that we have here, wallahi, we do not have them in our own Muslim countries. Um, you know, we can, you know, th there are avenues like, you know, Brother Suleiman mentioned, there are, you know, th there are organizations here that can help us, support us. There are people in our schools, in our, in our workplaces, uh, you have HR in, at work who will mm. help you if you have any abuse or any kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, negative experience. So mm. there's so much here now, um, as opposed to when I was growing up, couldn't really talk to my parents, didn't really have that, that connection with the masjid. Um, you know, counselors and things like that. Just, you know, I just, just, just didn't have that, that option at all. And then, you know, and then the other option, um, the other kind of aspect to this is the actual uh, society that we're living in now, um, you, you know, with, with, with the rise of the far right and all of these things, our youth are feeling, uh, you know, really like, um, is, this, is this siege mentality here, whether it's them against us. Mm. Uh, and I think that can be quite divisive. Um, so, you know, really, I think that we just need to take a step back and realize that, yes, there are challenges, but there are so many different avenues that we can go down. Now, whether it's counseling, whether it's, uh, you know, going via your local masjid, whether it's online groups, coaching, you know, there is so many different, mashallah, even within the Muslim community now, we have people, you know, like the mashallah sister Muslima, you know, who's doing great work as well in, uh, you know, in her part of the world where she is. It, this is like, this is a, this is a real blessing to be here living in a non-Muslim country, to have all of these avenues now. I think that really for our youth, they've got to keep an open mind, be open-minded, think you know, positive. Yes, there are challenges, but you have it so much more easier now in terms of the resources at your disposal compared to uh, someone like myself when I was you know, growing up through the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I had it a lot easier than my father had it, for example, when he, was, when he went through the schooling system in the 60s. Mm. So things are a lot better. And believe me, in the Muslim country, you know, racism is rife, tribalism, you know, prejudices, you know, all those things, you know, they are way, way, way behind um, the, the West in some of those areas, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So um, I think definitely it's very important to just keep a positive mind, I think, for, for our youth. Jazakumullah uh, khairan. Some uh, sister has put some question, which uh, sister, I'll come to you, inshallah. Before I come into your question, sister Tahira has posed the question. Can I ask Sister Khadija, please, to enlighten us as one of the one of the problems that we find in our society in our community? I mean, I, I don't, I can't speak about myself, but I don't know. Some imams probably have said this, delegated this, or even parents have said, like, you know, if our children have, or even somebody in our family have gone through this experience of being racial, ra uh, uh, racial abuse, or there was this homophobic comments, um, you know, it, it, things like comes out from our tongue. Oh, it's okay, you know. Uh, the Sahaba went through this, uh, the prophets went through this, you know, it, it's part of deen and Islam, but it's part of deen of Islam also to show that, look, we do not tolerate this, you know, the, it, it, because what happened is, 
what I'm looking at this sister Khadija is from this aspect and the psychological side of our youngsters because if they're gonna have this or the Sahaba went through this does that mean that they cannot retaliate at all that that means they have to stay under the Christian does that mean that there's no progression for them and working as a social worker I'm sure you have come across this working in schools and children that you know or parents making these comments like it's okay my son my daughter don't worry the Sahaba went through this you know, it's Islamic culture that we have to be in oppression. Islam does not teach us to be oppressed. As much as Islam teaches us harmony and love, we should be taking harmony and love also at the same time, isn't it, Sister Khadija? Isn't that right? Yes, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, I would like to thank um, the members of the panel for their amazing contribution and for Sister Muslima um, for your organization. And I really hope and pray that it grows to reach its maximum potential. I mean, and I also would like to stress that we, we as Muslims should remove every stigma from seeking mental health assistance. I think imams in every masjid, um, programs of mental health should be promoted. I just wanted to, to add that before I come to your question. And yes, Sheikh Javid, um, we should not um, accept any form of oppression. And in this country, there are laws you know, to tell us that oppression, discrimination is forbidden. You know, we have the equality law, you know, that, you know, uh, it's here to protect everyone against every form of discrimination. Mm. So maybe that's a knowledge that we should have in the Islamic, you know, community to know that a law exists that protects us from every form of discrimination. But also I will all like to bring something positive um, to our youths. I want the youths to know that we have signed a moral contract with the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. And what is that moral contract? Is that Allah SWT said that لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا He gave us in the Prophet of Allah the best role model, the best example. So this is the contract we have. When we say we're Muslims, that means we follow the Sunnah of the prophet and we take him as his role model but his role model here in relevance to our topic it's his ethics the ethics of the prophet how did he respond to wrongdoing to evil and to harm so the prophet he taught us virtue ethics which is the sacredness of everything we do the beauty in everything we do the sincerity in our actions that we act only to please allah in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah, and that our actions are based on kindness and compassion and, and empathy. When we respond with these virtues, as we are taught from our Nabi, who is our role model, wow. we will have positive outcomes in everything we are doing. Our actions should be beautiful, and this is the sacredness of virtual ethics. And the end result, the outcome, the result, is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But we have to act in a proactive way, in a beautiful way, according to the way, to the virtues of the Prophet Jazakallah khairan, Sister Khadija. That was a very informative um, 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 answer to that. Ha Sister has got a question over here. If any of our audience want to put a question, please, by all means in the chat, we'll be, we'll be able to answer it. Um, the question is, I guess we should be doing more to prevent people from feeling that way. Um, you know, um, Sister, um, uh, Sister Muslima and Brother Shahzad, obviously you, you two are in this kind of professional counseling and coaching. What kind of other interventions or other things that we can do to prevent uh, our community uh, for feeling this way? Uh, please, can you enlighten us, Brother Shahzad, uh, if it's possible? And then I'll go to Sister Muslima for the same question, please. Uh, Sister Muslima, can you please enlighten us first, please? Yeah, no problem, inshallah. So I think what needs to be done is that we need to create more of an awareness. We need to break down stigmas in communities, um, starting with our own. So, you know, doing more training uh, in the masjids, you know, mm. doing more within the halakas, doing more in schools. And I think even from like a non-Muslim perspective, I think... You know, um, I was reading Sister uh, Tahira's message, how uh, she kind of struggled in uh, all aspects of her life in terms of uni work um, and also uh, kind of that battle with uh, the police. And I think a lot of it comes down to lack of understanding and awareness. Um, 
So I think as professionals, what we need to do is, is to break that stigma, um, to kind of target these issues and, you know, kind of be unified. Because, you know, a lot of people um, don't like the idea of discrimination and, you know, are, are from, what's the word, um, in, a, in an environment, in a neutral environment. So I think what we should be doing is kind of, sticking together, you know, breaking stigmas, challenging people, um, holding our heads up and not being ashamed of who we are um, and sharing our experiences. Um, I know when Brother Shahzad was talking about his experiences um, growing up, you know, I can definitely um, say that I had similar experiences growing in uh, growing up in South Wales in a, in a village. I was the only Muslim girl here um, and I was so confused and, you know, hence why you know because of the confusion against you know am i muslim am i welsh am i this am i that you know not having a place to pray um feeling embarrassed to pray feeling mm -hmm. embarrassed to say or oh, i don't drink alcohol and all these things and actually you know even in the you know even in a working environment um being discriminated for being a muslim in a sense mm -hmm. if it's not directly it's indirectly so I think even part of like HR, you know, targeting HRs, um, you know, doing these um, training and breaking these stigmas and attitudes is, is a huge step for us. Um, and I think as professionals, we need to step it up in order to make it easy for uh, the young people and the community, definitely. Jazakumullah khairan for that. Very, very informative. Uh, Brother Shahzad, can you please enlighten us with a question that Sister Tahira has posed uh, over here, please? We should be doing more to prevent people from feeling this way. H how can we exceed on that? Um, so when the sister is saying we should do more, is that as in professional people, the community? Yeah, as, the an overall, as, a overall, as, as a overall, as a community, community, not just professional people, as a community, basically. Yeah, I, th I think the, 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 it's, it's a two way thing, right? So I think, you know, you've, you've we as, as a community, as individuals, as Muslims, as human beings, we have to take responsibility for the situation that we're in, mm. okay? And sometimes I feel that as Muslims, and I certainly was like this as well, that we're, we're too willing and too, we, we too easily blame everything around us. Yes, the environment could be better. Yes, the foreign policy of the government could be better. Yes, you know, the schooling structure could be better. Our massage could be run in a, you know, in a, in a more efficient manner. There's all of these external factors. Mm. But I think that, you know, there's two things here. We, first, we have to take responsibility for ourselves. First, when I get better, then things around me will get better. Mm. And if everybody has that mentality, then inshallah, we can be a very vibrant, prosperous community. And there are great signs uh, in terms of the, the, some of the achievements that the Muslim community is making, mashallah. Um, and some examples of that are in our panelists that we have here today, mashallah. People born here, gone through the schooling system here, mashallah, academically, uh, you know, very well spoken, trained, professionals. You know, we have so many examples of this up and down the country. So firstly, we need to take responsibility. You know, the, 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 there is this blame culture. And yes, there are problems. Yes, there is racism. There is, there is all of these things. But we have lots of good things going for us here in this community. Mm. We have people we can go to and reach out to for help. We're, we're able to get jobs. You know, we, we, we are just as entitled to all the benefits that the host community gets without any uh, discrimination uh, in, in, you know, in terms of what we are eligible to apply for. So definitely, in terms of the community, so for me, my role as a coach, definitely you know, I can do more. How can I do more? You know, I can, I can do initiatives on a local level, uh, which, uh, so for example, if I'm a, if I'm a well-paid coach and I have clients all over the world, then maybe what I can do is I can, in my local community, do work free of charge mm. because I'm getting paid well from, from my, you know, from my nine to five, my bread and butter. So I can take out some time for my local community, like Brother Suleiman, he's, he's from the IT telecoms industry, yet he does, uh, you know, he's using that, he's using his nine to five to serve the local community. So there are, there are people like that in our community. They've got a wealth of knowledge and skills and expertise, but they're not sharing it. On that point, can I, can I, can I just stop you that? I, I mean, there's a, yeah. one more question that we're going to go to right now. Uh, I think it's the brother or sister, I don't know, but there's a question. But you say help in the community. Obviously, that help in the community, that base should be, uh, should be the center of the community or should be the base of the community, which is the Muslim community, and that is the masjid. Shouldn't those kind of activities or training 
uh, of, of pre preventing all the issue be from the masjid. I mean, I'm talking from the perspective that I'm an imam, I work in the masjid. I, yeah. I'm just trying to get your point of view. Isn't that supposed to be? Because our youngsters look towards the masjid nowadays, isn't it? They say they, for help and support, spiritual, moral support, that's, that needs to come from the masjid. You know, they're not going to go to any club or any disco club or nightclub to get this moral support. But yeah. if the masjid across uh, the country are preventing even from tackling these issues, and there's youngsters who really need this help and support. I mean, I'm talking from a, from a head teacher manager perspective, a teacher ma perspective. Then isn't that, isn't that we failing? Isn't that we failing? How 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 will you reconcile with that? No, it's it's, it's a good point. Um, we probably would need a completely separate uh, discussion around the whole masjid system and what's going on in the UK. But you know, I I, I take your point on board. Absolutely, the masjid. I mean, Sister run, Khadija, but, Sister uh, Khadija, because Sister Khadija did say imams like myself need to take this <laughs> into uh, yeah. in, in, in our shoulders. By all means, you know, yes. stop, yeah. we, we we do our khutbas and etc. We try our best, but obviously yeah. there should be a higher level of position in terms of you know what the imams are entitled to do, or what are entitled to do. So, Brother Shahzad, back to you. How then yeah. those intervention can be taking place, please? Okay, yeah, I'll speak I, after him. Yes, uh, it's you know it's 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 an excellent question, and you know there is no um, kind of short short winded answer for this one. But what I would say is that yes, you know the masjids could be you know kind of in terms of the governance of the masjids, there's a lots of room for improvement. Brother Suleiman knows this. We have these discussions quite a lot. I've spoken to you about this as well, Sheikh. Um, you know, I mean, one point I would like to make is that mashallah, we're very blessed in terms of reading. Alhamdulillah, to have, you know, uh, you know, Abu Bakr Masjid, we have Aisha Masjid, we have some masjids which are, you know, they're, they're moving forward. There's still lots of room for improvement. There's lots of things that could improve. But mashallah, they're moving in the right, they've got young imams like yourself, you know, who are mashallah, who are very communi community orientated. And, you know, I think that there, is, there is some positive things, but th there are a lot of challenges with the way the masjids are run. Now, either, you know, I can sit back and say, right, my masjid is not there for me. You know, it's just people who are just obsessed with power and they just want to run it the way they want to run it. And, you know, I can just accept that. Or I can say, no, you know, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to seek someone else. I'm going to maybe set up my own organization online. We've got, you know, this, this modern era we live in, the technology, there's coaches out there, there's counselors out there, there's social workers out there. There is, you know, there is so much opportunity for people to get the help that they need. But it all comes back to the mindset. If you're going to think that, no, you know, it's just, you know, our must, my must is not helping me. You know, this is just like, you know, this is, um, this is a no-win situation. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything. You know, it's that defeatist men, you know, like, uh, mentality. I think mm -hmm. we really need, to, as a community, we need to snap out of it. Because you can achieve anything that you want to achieve. If you put your mind to it and you have to work in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing, especially living in, uh, a progressive first world country like we do here in the UK, uh, there's, there's no reason why you cannot overcome racism, you cannot overcome prejudices and achieve whatever you want. And mm -hmm. yes, the masjids could be run better. It's a completely, you know, we'd have to do a different d d discussion on what things should be happening in our masjid. But, mm -hmm. you know, alhamdulillah, I think that things are getting better, but really each individual needs to, needs to take responsibility for themselves and try to look outside of the square box the masjid you're right the masjid is the hub of the community in a, in the glory days of islam everything revolved around the masjid you had a problem you come to the masjid you had uh, you know a happy occasion to celebrate you would do it through the masjid um you know that would be that's the ideal we haven't got that so what do we do you know we have to just make do with the you know, the best that we can use the technology look at look around us family friends there are people who are always around us who can help us you know, and um, I go back to what uh, Brother Suleiman said earlier, that reach out to someone, mm -hmm. you know, reach out to someone, whether it's a friend, a sibling, you know, someone you look up to. Mm -hmm. uh, just 80% of the problem gets solved when you get it out of your head and share it with someone. It reduces the tension, the stress. Yeah. Um, and then once you do that, you know, you can then put some strategy and some, uh, you know, me mechanisms in place to challenge those problems that you're going through. Jazakumullah khairan. Brother Suleiman, I'm coming to you, but I'm going to ask Sister Khadija a question over here, which is a very interesting question. And I might ask you the same question, Brother Suleiman. So the question over here, or, or, or the comment made, is that anti-black racism within the Muslim community drives black community members away, Sister Khadija. You yourself, you are from the African community. Should black Muslims have their own safe space? This is the first question. And then within that same, uh, somebody has uh, posed over here um, that 
female have been rejected in the masjid. They have tried to volunteer, but they've been rejected in the masjid. Now, Sister Khadija, I know you in a personally uh, capacity, also in a professional capacity also. Please, can you enlighten us with, with, with this kind of challenges? And, and then I will go with the same kind to question to Brother Suleiman, inshallah ta'ala. Yes, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, it's heartbreaking that um, blacks don't only suffer racism from the, you know, from white people or maybe some other people, but that the racism that black people uh, experience is also inside our masajids, and this is tragic, you know. So, but I will never agree for black people to find their own space because that is disunity. And this deen does not promote disunity. No matter what our differences are, we have to have the right people, you know, to, to come and bring us together, to unite our hearts, you know, maybe to create programs, to create, you know, different ways that we can connect and, you know, have these dialogues. So that this um, racism that we suffer within the community, you know, will come to an end and we will unite. Definitely uniting as one ummah, will always be better than for us dividing and for us having Bengali mosques, Pakistani mosques, Arab mosques, African mosques. Where will we go if we as a community allow ourselves to divide into little segments? Because division means that we will lose our power and we will lose all the critical resources that we can enjoy if we all come together. Definitely there is racism, but I will not really advocate for, you know, blacks to, to separate. And one thing I would like to bring here is that we as Muslims, we should be careful of false modesty. And this is a disease that affects a lot of us, that what we say out in our tongue is very different from what we have in our hearts. Mm. And people can feel it when you're not being truthful. When you're racist to somebody, they will feel it. Even if you say, Salaam Alaikum, sister, you kiss him, kiss here, kiss there, you know, and you don't mean it. Mm. The person mm. will know. So let us be real and avoid this idea of false modesty, where what we say in our words or what we display in the outside is really the opposite of what we have in our hearts. Mm. And we should know also that Allah said that indeed the hearing and the sight and the heart will be questioned on the day of Yom al Qiyam. Yes. So yes. what we harbor in our hearts, you know, if we are racist, you know, this disease that we have in our hearts is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and will be held accountable on the day of Yom al Qiyam. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I wanted to contribute for that answer. But the Suleiman, something similar to for you also, because you work within uh, uh, Reading Muslim Council uh, also, and you are a representative of men, and mashallah, your work has been across Berkshire and up north. However, just few few things I will want to add from, from that as the question uh, appearing over here. We should be a unified, unified voice. Why? How, I mean, how can we make sure that we are a unified voice? Uh, unity, as Sister Khadija mentioned, unity in the Ummah is important. You've been working with many masajids, many organizations, many Muslim organizations across uh, the UK. And is that something that you still reckon that is missing within the Muslim Ummah, topping this up with other questions that unfortunately we don't have a unified voice or unity in the Ummah? Or you reckon to some extent it's coming along, but it's too slow? We can't hear you, Brother Suleiman. Sorry, I was on, I was on mute there. Sorry. So the, the first part of accepting or challenging or correcting an injustice or a problem is to accept that it exists. So I, I do agree that racism does exist within our communities. Unfortunately, it's 2020 mm -hmm. when it still does exist. But we have to challenge that. So we don't want to just sit back and say, you know, that it exists, we're not going to do anything about it. As a sister mm -hmm. very rightly said, we have to challenge this. Mm -hmm. We have to challenge it by doing more integration. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, we, we acknowledge, actually, that Muslims are a multicultural, multi-diverse uh, community. There's not one single body that represents all of us. It's difficult to get that because the Muslims in the UK, we've got quite a large Arab community, quite a large Pakistani community, an Indian community. And I often, I often even joke with, with Brother Shazad, who I've worked with uh, on a personal level and professionally as well, is that even for me as a northerner, the culture between North England and South England is so different. You know, mm. even even I mean, you you yourself have lived in Manchester and and, and 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 Wales. So there's a, there's a big there's a big culture there. But that's 
not to use those differences to divide us, we use those differences to bring ourselves together. And I've seen this. So one of the things I always say is that you know, I can never understand, for example, East African culture, because I was never brought up in an East African cultural environment. Mm. So we have an Afri African cultural uh, uh, society here in Reading, and we have a Sri Lankan one, for example. One of the things I've learned from, from both of those communities is they're very eager to get pe people from other communities involved in their events and things like that. So when the sister said, talked about safe places, my view on it is slightly different. I think isolation is definitely not good, and unification is important, as the sister mentioned. So when we have our communities come together, it's important that we, 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 you know, we get others involved in those. And the Arab community have many times come and have asked me to come and speak to them about many varying topics. So it's important to get that, to build that understanding and that love between communities, we must involve ourselves. So do not isolate just the Sri Lankan community or the Arab community, let's bring people together. And the masjids are an ideal environment for that. And if they're not, that's not a problem in my eyes. If the Muslims cannot un unify uh, our communities to a certain extent, some of the challenges that Brother Shazad mentioned, okay, there's other opportunities. Let's not, you know, if we, if we, if we face a closed door, that's fine, let's open another door. If we face a hurdle, let's jump over it. Mm. Let's, let's all try to overcome these challenges, not by taking those setbacks, because setbacks are inevitable in life. Mm. It's part of our, you know, it's part of life that these things happen. But we must overcome those. And we must show to the masjids that actually if you open up and allow people to do things, then, the, then it will bring uh, society. To I remember a, a private conversation that you and I had, Imam Javed, maybe about three years ago, mm. uh, when you first came as an imam here in Reading. And we were talking about, you, must, you, you might recall the conversation that we had, we were talking about open our mosque day. Mm. We were talking about the, the challenges that we you know, that the, the, the masjid committee were afraid about what problems this might cause and things like that. And we said, we talked about, we, we talked about it, we discussed it, we said, let's, Let's show this as a shining example, not to the masjid committee and the musallis that attend the mosque, but the wider communities, non-Muslim communities, who come to that, open your, you know, visit, your, visit my mosque day and see that it's an, it's an enjoyable environment. Muslims are friendly. Actually, they're not just one diverse community. And we were very fortunate on that occasion that we had the volunteers on that particular day were from all, all different nationalities, mm -hmm. from, the African, uh, from the African Muslims to the South, uh, Southeast Asian, to the Arab community, mm -hmm. to, the, to the reverts. We had mm -hmm. lots of people. And when they came, when the non-Muslims came to that particular day, they said, oh, no, it's, it's not just brown and black faces that we're seeing here. You know, when they asked the person where they're from, they said, oh, I'm from this country. And so many different countries and so many different cities in the UK, they, they were generally taken, taken aback by that. Mm -hmm. So each time we face these hurdles, there's, we, we explore the opportunity, as Brother uh, Shazat and his sister said, we talked to... Uh, both the sisters actually said, we talk to people that we trust, we, we share those problems, mm -hmm. we've, we come together to devise a strategy of how we can overcome them. Mm. I'm going to be cautious of time. I know some of our uh, members in the panels need to go. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. However, very briefly, uh, can I request all uh, our brothers uh, and sisters from our panel members uh, to summarize this um, issue for our youngsters, especially, because school, college, and university, they'll face these challenges, as I mentioned. This, they take this tension in the head, as mentioned Brother Shahzad. We need to out there and speak up, and we need to you know, make sure that we are relating what we're going through so we can get some help. Obviously, if we're not gonna speak up, we're gonna unfortunately be traumatized, and you know, what the challenges will be never be able to regulate or educate them, hence, therefore, they will no, never be able to progress themselves in their daily life. So can I ask our panel to quickly summarize all this for our youngsters in one, two minutes, please. Starting with uh, Brother uh, Suleiman, please, just to summarize for our youngsters in one, two minutes, please, as we're cautious of time. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what people like both the sisters uh, have said, is don't isolate yourself if you're feeling injustice, you're feeling discrimination, people have called you names, or you're seeing from the outside world what's happening and that's really affecting you personally. Reach out talk to an adult, talk to your family. You, even now we have lots of young imams in the masjid, talk to them, talk to the people that you trust and try and you know, uh, express yourself in that way. And yes. also, I want you to add one final, as I mentioned at the beginning, that throughout history, and history is important because history repeats itself in cycles, Muslims have faced adversity. Mm. We, we have always overcome it. We've always grown as communities and we've always over, overcome it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us many, many times that if we show patience, 
and we, we try to tackle those injustices then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a way out of those difficulties for us. So it's important to reach out to your community, reach out to the people that you trust. You're not a victim in this alone. We will, you know, inshallah, you know, there's many Muslim organizations now that are building the confidence for people. Reach out to those people. Jazakumullah khairan. Fantastic. So this was for the youngsters. It's the same for you, Brother Shahzad, please, for our youngsters. A message, a very brief message for them, especially during these difficult times with pandemic and, you know, with COVID-19. There's many things going around them, and especially what's happened over the weekend, last weekend in Reading. Please, um, if you can highlight it, very summarize it, please. Thank you, Sheikh. All I want to say, I just want to reiterate what uh, our esteemed guests, including yourself, have said. Um, and I guess my way of expressing that would be to say to your listeners, especially the youth out there, is really just change your story. And if you change your story, you will change your life. Okay. Yes, there is this pandemic situation. Yes, there is racism. But with every difficulty, there comes ease. Right. And you've got to look for the positives. What are the positives in this racism situation? Well, because of this man's death, his, de his death hasn't gone to waste. There's going to be reforms in the U.S. There's going to be a change of perceptions all around the world. We're seeing it. The way people have come together, the way people have been protesting. There is, uh, somebody mentioned earlier, an excellent point. Use your school, your workplace, as an, as an use it as an opportunity to address Islamophobia, to address racism, because people are willing to listen right now. Mm. Okay, use this as an opportunity. If you're someone, you know, who wants to do something, then... Do something in your environment, whether it's within your community, whether in your local masjid. If the masjid door is closed, then go to the workplace. The work, work, workplace is not accommodating. You know, reach out for someone for help. Someone that you think is, got, you know, who, who is, who is uh, able to help you. There's so much to do. There is a lot of positive things, but you've got to change your story. If you keep thinking that you've, you're oppressed, you know, you're, uh, there, there, there's, there's no opportunity, you're hated, you're hated because of your color, because of your religion then you will carry that story, you will carry that baggage for you throughout your life. It will mm. affect you in your relationships, it will, help you, it will affect you in your, uh, in your finances, it will affect you in your spirituality, your, your relationship with God. Mm. So please, I, I would humbly request our youth to change your story, be positive, be, be uh, gr grateful that you live here in a land where you have support around you. You can, at the click of a button, you know, you can find organizations, there's, there's sheikhs like yourself, mashallah, who are available, willing to help, give their own personal time. There are organizations, you know, mm -hmm. there are people like Brother Suleiman, uh, counseling, mashallah, the sister, she has her own, you know, counseling organization. There's coaching. MCB in the UK are doing great work. So just, just reach mm -hmm. out for help. There's so much here. There's mm -hmm. so much here. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah. So change your story. You know, change your story. So Sister Muslima, change your story, turn a new leaf, please. Can you summarize that, please? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, I think the biggest thing uh that i'd like to say is that self-care is really important in the whole process and you are important as individuals so if you're not in a good place you are not going to be able to challenge these things so priority is yourself so take time reflect you know increase your ibadah you know connect with allah get the support that you need and then do what you need to do when you feel strong enough when you feel um, that you're ready to challenge and take on these things. And, you know, alhamdulillah, the, the biggest thing is dua. If you haven't got the ability to stand up or challenge or do these things, make dua. Ask Allah to give you the tawfiq to do these things. Um, and turn to people, yeah? And talk. Don't suffer in silence. And I think, you know, one of the most important things that Brother Shahzad kind of um, highlighted for me is that, you know what, there are professionals like um, Brother Suleiman, Brother Shahzad, you know, um, Imam Javid, Sister Khadiza, and myself, you know, yes, we have a nine to five job, but we're here for you too. So, you know, I think Allah brought us all here for a reason together. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all feeling quite passionate. So, you know, if you are struggling, you know, message us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, inshallah, we will support you through it. Wonderful. Jazakumullah khairan. And Sister Khadija, lastly with you, especially being a social worker, I'm sure you have to deal with many cases like this, but can you summarize it for our youngsters? Not to, not to suffer in silence, please. How will, you, how will you summarize this and give them an advice in regards to this, please? Yes, just to reiterate all what the panelists, you know, Brother Suleyman, Brother Shahzad, and uh, Sister Muslima, their amazing contribution and their summary of what our youths need to do. Mm -hmm. And my point also is just to reiterate what Sister Muslima said, mm -hmm. that we need to own our narrative. Mm -hmm. We need to be happy and to be positive. We also need to remember the last sermon of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because this is empowering. Mm -hmm. He said that, you know, life is sacred. Mm -hmm. We should never f forget that as Muslim. The last sermon, 
is critical in every aspect of our life. He talked about equality, mm. justice, and peace. Mm. And then no human being is superior to another. Mm. That is a knowledge that we should have ingrained in our subconscious. There's no one who is superior to you. There's mm. no one who is better than you. The one who is better is one who has more iman. Mm. And like some, you know, Muslim said, let's make dua. Let's seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the source of help is through his hands. And wallahi, he will help us come out of every difficulty. We tested, but whenever you're patient with your test, you will come out of it victorious. It doesn't mean that you suffer in silence. No, sometimes people don't understand the word sober. It doesn't mean to be you know, inactive. No, it means to be proactive mm -hmm. in a positive way. So we need to be positive. But I also want to advise the youth not to have arrogance, mm -hmm. for them to have humility and then to be of service to humanity. When you give, the more you give, the more you offer your service, the happier you will be in life. So let them, let all the youths be active, you know, and um, do volunteering, do whatever they could, and offer service to the community, and Allah will give them in return, you know, higher in their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Jazakallah. I think we are shortage of time. This is a good discussion that we have to make sure that we have another one more session, obviously, subject to my panel being available. For me, it's been a very uh, eye-opening and refreshing. I've learned a lot from my panel and my brothers and my sisters who have given the time. Uh, Jazakallah khairan for all the audience, and mashallah, Sister Tahira, and many other sisters and brothers for posting your question and your life experience. Uh, I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job, amazing job. Inshallah, please carry on. Uh, myself, you know, you can contact me. I'm Imam Javid in Redding. I have my, you know, obviously uh, working here in the Masjid, Masjid Abu Bakr. Brother Shahzad is from Redding. Brother Suleiman is from Redding. Sister Khadija and Sister Muslima are all from South Wales. And mashallah, they, within the, prophet, within the occupation, they're professional and they have been dealing with this. However, my young brothers and my sisters in Islam and my brothers and my sisters in Islam, let's look at this and summarize this. Start new story, turn on your new leaf, be humble, do sabr, make dua to Allah, and tackle everything according to the way Sharia has taught us to tackle, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Jazakumullah for your khair for your time. Look after yourself and jazakallah to my panel for your time, inshallah. May Allah reward you and grant you barakah, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah reward you and may Allah make sure that he elevate your status in this world and the hereafter also, inshallah. Jazakumullah wa khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.